In number one, it's telling us that we've got a, an invalid proof, um, so a proof that's wrong. That's trying to prove that all isosceles triangles are similar, which is not a true statement, but this proof um, inaccurately determines that it's true. So we want to try and figure out where this proof went wrong. So the first step was to draw two isosceles triangles, ABC and DEF. Okay, that have AC and CB equal to each other and DF and EF equal to each other. So I've done that off to the side. Now the next um, step is asking us to dilate this triangle ACB to create a new triangle. And we're going to leave C as the center and we're going to do a scale factor of DF, so the new triangle length divided by the original. So we'll just dilate this. Um, using C as the center. And then we just want to get it um, so that this new A prime, C prime is the same length as DF. All right, so then, so this is now our A prime, C prime, A prime, B prime, C prime. So this is our new triangle. So that's fine. We can certainly dilate to any skill factor we want. Then it would like for us to translate this new segment by directed segment CF. So it wants to take us, so we take C to F. That looks like I needed to dilate it just a little bit larger probably. Um, but so translates, so let's see, C goes to F, um, which is going to take our new triangle, um, take us to another triangle. And they just keep renaming them. So just keep looking at my green triangle. Um, but so then that's going to take us to a new triangle. Since a translation preserves distance, we know that A to F is equal to A to C since that's how we dilated it. Um, and also DF, um, so all three of those are the same. And then B, BF, so if I went from this point to F under here on the black triangle, B prime, C prime, um, and then EF, those are all the same length. So that's fine. You can translate. Then it says, um, now since we know that A double prime, so again, this blue triangle, so A, D, F, um, so A to F and um, D to F are the same length that we could rotate this until the triangle landed and got those two side lengths on top of each other. Completely fine. Then it says since B prime F is the same as EF, so this new green length is the same as this black length, now we could rotate it to put those back on each other. And then it says that we have gotten the entire triangle to be on top of the other one. So that's where it goes wrong because once we rotate a second time, so in this step, when we go to rotate to put B onto E, it moves A off of D. Okay, so rotating again moves A off of, oops, of D. And so we don't have a triangle that lands on top of the other one. All right, number two, which statement proves um, a valid justification for why all triangles are, or sorry, why all circles are similar, okay? So why are all circles similar? So A says all circles have the same shape, a circle, so they must be similar. I mean, it's close, but not quite. That doesn't use our definition of similar, okay? Um, because that's kind of like saying all triangles are the same shape, so then they have to be similar. We need a little bit more substance to that. B says all circles have no angles and no sides, so they must be similar. No. Um, C, I can translate any circle exactly onto the other, so they must be similar. That's not true. I mean, because if we're going to translate, here's one circle, here's another circle. Translating this circle on top of that one doesn't land them on top of each other or get them the same side, um, the same size, so that one's not going to work. Um, I can translate the center of any circle onto the center of another. That's what I did here. Then I can dilate from the center by an appropriate scale factor so they must be similar. So that would be true because we can take the new radius divided by the current radius and we would be able to get every circle 
um, to dilate to the same size, so D. Number three, which pair of polygons are similar? So remember, polygons have to have the same angles and then proportional sides. So if we're taking a look here, um, this second set of shapes we could rule out right away since they don't have the angles being marked congruent, okay? So B is out. Um, and then D, you can kind of see they kept this length the same while changing the other side lengths. Um, so these tens divided by two, but the sixes stayed the same. So this is going to be bad because they do not have proportional sides. So then we can look at um, A and C. So for A, we can take this shortest side five and divide it by the shortest side in the other triangle. So five over three. And then that should be the same as if we take the middle side 12 and divide it by the middle side here of four and five divided by three and 12 divided by four are not equal. So these sides are not proportional. So A is not good. So we can take a look at C and we see that we have the angles are the same. Okay, so the angles are marked congruent right away. So then we just need to check the side lengths comparing corresponding sides. So one compared to two, and then five compared to 10, and those do simpl both simplify to one half or 0.5. So all of those sides are in proportion. So C has the pair of similar figures. All right, number four wants us to select all transformations that would show that triangle ABC and ADE are similar. And then it also tells us the length of AC is six. So this first one says that we could dilate this um, larger triangle by a scale factor of a half. So um, bring it to half its size. And so if we did that, we know that all the side lengths would match um, the measurements of AED since we had eight down to four, four down to two, and six down to three. And then it's saying we could reflect it over line AD, or sorry, AC. And then we can see that that would land on this other one. So that would prove similar. Um, B is saying we could, instead of translating the bigger triangle, we could actually translate the smaller triangle. So we could make this one two times the size. So by a scale factor of two and then flip over AC and we would see that it would land on that larger triangle. So this um, B works. C is saying that we could actually do the reflection first, which would be fine. So then we would reflect and then it would be over here. Then do the dilation by one half and bringing it down. So C would work as well. And then a similar idea here, but using the smaller triangle. So D is saying if we took the smaller triangle and first we dilated it by a factor of two, so doubled its size and then, or sorry, um, no, this one's saying reflect first. Okay, so take this triangle here and reflect it first, then double the size. And so that one would work as well. Um, final one, or final two here, work with translations first. So this first one is saying if we do a translation by segment DC and then we um, do a dilation by a scale factor of two around C, that that would land it back on itself. And that's not going to. We would still need a reflection. So E is wrong. Um, and then F has us do a translation um, of ABC. And, uh, well, it says either. So it says translate either ABC or AED by directed segment DC. And then reflect over line AC. So we can see that's not going to land on there either. So F would be false. Number five, determine if each statement must be true um, or could possibly be true or definitely can't be true. So two equilateral triangles are similar. Um, this one is always going to be true. And that um, is going to be because the angles are the same. So let me make this a little bit smaller. 
Um, so it's going to be always true because you will always have all 60 degree angles. So we know that the angles will match. Um, and we can um, take a dilation by a scale factor of the new side length divided by the original side length since all the side lengths are the same and that's going to put us to the same size triangle since all the side lengths were the same um and then this last one so all equal or an equilateral triangle and a square are similar that's going to be never true since they aren't the same shape All right, so number six is telling us that we can find a sequence of rigid transformations and dilations that'll take E, F, G, H to A, B, C, D. So a couple um, different ways that you can do this. So I'm gonna start um, with a dilation so that I can get them to the same size. So dilate E, F, G, H, um, using E as the center and five halves as the scale factor. And remember you figure out scale factor by doing the new size divided by the original. So the new is five divided by the original is two. Then I'm gonna translate um, EFGH by directed segment EA. So taking point E onto point A since they are corresponding. Then rotate E, F, G, H until F coincides with B. So once I get um, this triangle, or sorry, this square to be the same size as A, B, C, D with that first um, dilation. Then I moved E to A and then rotated until this point, oops, until this point landed on B and then that rotated the whole square down to land on top of A, B, C, D. All right, number seven, select all true statements. So angle ACB, so ACB is this one, is 180 minus X. That would be false because these two lines are parallel and these are corresponding angles. So they're gonna be equal to each other, which is what B says. So they're gonna be equal to each other, not equal to 180. And then triangle ACB is similar to ADE is true. And we can look at um, some proportions here to make sure. Um, but ACB, if you look at, we've got six divided by two. So you've got six divided by two. And then we've also got this whole length here is 15 divided by this length here of five. So we can see that those are um, reducing to the same number. AD is a third of AC. And you can kind of see um, the scale factor here is three or one third, depending on which way you which way you're looking at it. So if you're trying to make it bigger, if we're going from the smaller one to the bigger one, it's times three. If we're going to the bigger one to the smaller one, it would be one third. So when we're looking at this, AD is one third of AC. That would be true because we're doing the smaller over the larger in these two similar figures. And then AD is half of DC. So here's DC. And so if this is one part and the total is three parts, then this would be two parts. So one to two, it would be one half of DC. So one third of the full segment, so one third of AC, but one half of DC.